Amen. Well, we're teaching our continuation of our class on uh, miracles. So you can say it like this, you know, how to receive your miracle if you need a miracle or how to receive a miracle for somebody else. Amen. Well, this miracle, I was a hot summertime. We was out in the hay field. We was bailing hay and we were loading it up. We had a hay loader and everything. We was loading it up, putting it in the barn, me and a couple other guys. And uh, my dad and another uh, man was bailing the hay and stacking it up and all that kind of stuff. Getting and we, we was, uh, me and him, uh, my dad, which uh, was in the hay field, helping his friend, which is my friend, which was my friend's dad. And uh, so that we, they, they, one of them ran to town and they're gone a long time. And I sat there by myself loading up hay. And so this friend of my dad, his son got stuck on the other side of the railroad tracks. And he finally got there, man, it, it was a long time. It seemed like you're out there by yourself in the hot sun, loading up, loading up. Uh, hey, by yourself, and it, you know, and I'd put a bell or two in there. It had a loader on the side of the truck, and I'd have to go back there and stack it. And it was getting hot, and he showed up, and I was like, "Man, where you been?" He said, "I got stuck on the railroad tracks." I said, "On the other side of the railroad tracks." I said, "What was going on?" We heard ambulances and stuff go out there. We didn't think nothing about it. And he said, uh, your friend Todd got ran over by a train, got hit by a train. I said, what? He said, yeah, your friend Todd got ran over by a train. Well, I didn't care if he was bailing hay. I unhooked that loader. I don't, I, we unloaded the hay. It was on there. I said, I got to go to the hospital. And they're like, what's he doing going to the hospital? I said, you got to get this hay. I said, I'll be back. I just got in the truck and left. I didn't care what they said, anybody. And so I just left. I knew I was supposed to be at the hospital. So I went there, and there was people from high school there. We were still in high school, uh, or we had just graduated from high school. And Todd was married to the pretty lady, beautiful uh, cheerleader. He was like the most popular guy in school, and she was the most popular girl in school. And they just loved me. I don't know why, but they did. And so I went to the hospital, a helicopter sitting outside. And here come, as soon as I got there, everybody's talking to me, you know, because from high school students. And here come Todd. Back then, they, they didn't have a separate entrance at the hospital like they do now. They had to wheel the patient in right through the waiting room hall. And then they wheeled them out to the helicopter right in front of everybody. They change that around nowadays. Keeps people from being so dramatic, you know. So I saw him and he had blood all over his head and everything where the train had ran into him. There's no mercy in a train, you know. So they life lighted him to Tulsa. And everybody left. Well, I had never driven in Tulsa in my life. I didn't have a clue anything. I thought you could do like Oak Mulgee, you know, just, oh, I'm going to that building right over there and just drive over there to it. But Tulsa, you can see a building, closer you get, that building may disappear and you're like, where in the world am I at? You know, no landmarks or nothing. I didn't know any street addresses. So I stayed at home. I went out to see Grandma out north of town, which was his grandma. And she came outside crying, you know, and he, she gave a really bad report. She went up there to see him. She gave me a bad report. I was trying to console her, but she gave me a bad report. So I went down to my Uncle Bob's property, and there was a row of trees with limbs hanging down above your head and the dirt underneath there. It hadn't rained in a while, so the dirt was just like powder. And I was walking underneath there, and I just put my hands up, and I didn't know anything. I mean, all I knew was draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to me. And this was, I'm already like 18 years old. When I was 13, I knew God healed Bill's baby. And so I started learning that 
If I got serious with God, he'd get serious with me and people would get miracles. So I'm walking underneath that tree. Like I said, I didn't know what I was doing, but it just came out of my spirit. Does Todd have to die? Does Todd have to die? I mean, it's inside of me said, well, only if you let him. Now that shocked somebody right there. I'm going to repeat that again. <laughs> I went to my Uncle Bob's house because I, I wasn't going to go by what Grandma was saying. Man, she's, you know, she's, she's pumping that fear and anxiety. She lived that way all the time. And so I knew I couldn't turn to that because that was just, that was going to make it worse. And so I went to my Uncle Bob's house, walked underneath that shade tree. I had some horses over there, so I was went over there probably to water them, and then I seen some shade. So I walked underneath there, and and uh, underneath the trees was just like powder. It was just it was so hot outside, but it was just like powder. So I was walking through there, and and uh, sinking down about that far, and then in that soft ground, it was a powder dirt powder and I just said out of my spirit you know I didn't think like that it just came out of my spirit they said does Todd have to die does Todd have to die and just plain as day inside of me said well only if you let him I said well I ain't gonna let him then <coughs> I ain't gonna let him no I ain't gonna let him no, I just decided I ain't going to let him die. And I had somebody, you know, years later I found out we have authority over death. Well, I didn't know it. See, I didn't know any scriptures or anything like that. I was just a tall, skinny, linky uh, horse trainer. We had a bunch of cows and hauling hay and all that kind of stuff. No, only if you let him. I said, well, I ain't going to let him then. Then it, then it was just like, well, you need to go see him. So I got the truck. I had on boots. I just, I, mean, I came right out of the hay field. I had on boots and pants and long pants and short sleeve white shirt, uh, uh, short sleeve uh, T-shirt. You know, I had t uh, white, white undershirt on, hauling hay, trying to stay cool. And I, and I found out where he was at. He was in St. Francis Hospital. I said, well, that's a pink building, ain't it? He said, yep, that's a pink building. I know how to get there. I just kept driving towards Tulsa until I saw St. Francis Hospital or saw some buildings way over there. And so I, I just kind of I said, well, God showed me I wasn't going to let him die. So, so, so. Same guy show me that, going to show me how to get over to that hospital. I mean, I was dumber than mud now. I didn't know nothing. I didn't know how to read a map or anything. I was just a tall, skinny country boy. I hauled hay, trained horses, and had cows, you know. I mean, raised pigs and stuff. I mean, uh, people look at me now, days, and they're like, I can't believe you live like that. I did. I loved it. I've been all over the world since then preaching the gospel. Seeing so, you know, all kinds of miracles. And so don't get your eyes on me. He, the Holy Spirit is what told me. He's what, he's what told me. He don't have to. Only if you let him. So I can't take credit for that. I just said, okay, I won't let him then. So I got in the truck, drove up there, finally found it. Went to the hospital. Gave him the name. They gave me the room number. Went up in the elevator. Opened the door. His brother's standing right there. He said, Michael Sean. That's what they used to call me. That's my that's my name in high school. Somebody calls me Michael Sean. I know right then. That's somebody from high school. Nowadays, all the younger people just call me Mike Riley. But I uh, said, well, I said, how's he doing? I said, well, he was, he was asking about you. So I knew he was conscious. I knew he was conscious. And... Uh, so I stayed with him. Nobody else was there. Everybody else was gone. If I stayed till late at night. And then finally it came time to, you know, probably going to have to go to bed. Or he's, you know, so I stayed a little bit longer because he wanted me to stay. And but I just knew he was going to be all right. See, because I didn't tell him anything God told me. 
But I knew what God told me. Has he got to die? Not unless you let him. She got authority over death in Jesus' name. I didn't know it. I'm telling you this to encourage you. Maybe you don't know the Bible well enough, but you can learn through this what to do. Holy Spirit speaking right to you right now. You know he is. And I learned years later, if you, I know I learned when with Bill's baby, if you draw near to God, get serious with God, he'll get serious with you and do miracles. Well, three days later, three, four days, something like that. It wasn't very long. We went, I went up to the, he said, they said, well, you want, uh, want us to come get you? So his brother, and he said, no, Mike's going to give me a ride home. This guy got hit by a train now. The other guy, he was in the hospital a long time. And he got out of the hospital. And I took him home. He just, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't even know. I didn't know. I just knew to go that way. That's all I knew. To get home to Moggy. I didn't even know directions. I didn't know north, south, east, west. I didn't know what any of that meant. And that night, when I left the hospital, it was pitch black dark. And I had went north instead of south. And I didn't know it. I got down to part of town, and I mean, it was gun carrying part of town you know and uh, finally there was a store open it was so late at night there was a store and I went in there I said which way is Oak Mulgee he said that way so I just so I just got I just drove and I saw a sign Oak Mulgee that way and he after he told me I said all right but I was so happy I got I just I just stayed that direction all the way and got to Oak Mulgee I can drive around pretty good in Tulsa now, but I mean, you got you got to start somewhere with learning, with learning stuff, with how to learn things. Just don't be afraid to learn. The Holy Spirit will show you. He showed me. I was dumber than mud. I mean, I thought I was maybe had a brain, but I mean, I was just eighteen year old kid. You know, I didn't know nothing. I got saved when I'd you know, already been saved for ten years, but I just a, a goofball cowboy guy. You know, horseman really. And I didn't know anything. And so I uh, I went to a, a church school uh, for a few years. And they taught you scriptures and stuff, but they was just teaching you what their group believed. They, they wasn't teaching you the Bible. They wasn't teaching you, you know, about miracles and stuff like that. They didn't know. There was nice people, but they didn't know they did not know nothing about miracles. So they couldn't teach it. They didn't know anything about the gifts of the Spirit, so they couldn't teach it. They knew salvation, and that was good. And uh, But I was getting miracles. People was getting ready to die. Bill's baby and all the other ones on there. And uh, when I was an 18-year-old boy in the hayfield, Todd, he lived. he's still alive today. He got married, got a couple kids, boy and a girl. I'm the godfather to his son. And uh, some of his family, you know, still lives here. He moved to Dallas. See, so, you know, it should have get, but see, I had to get past that fear stuff. See, fear, anxiety, worry. That, that blocks your blessing. Because you can't put your faith in fear, anxiety. See, when you when you when you say it scares me to death or or anything like that, you're putting your faith, you're putting fear. See, fear, anxiety, and worry is all from the devil, all from the dark side of life. If you're living on the dark side of life, trying to get miracles, you're not going to get any. See, it takes faith. Uh, people say, well, I guess I don't have any faith. Well, feed your faith. See, I knew that I had enough sense to turn to God because I got saved when I was eight years old and gave my life to Jesus. And now, the Holy Spirit still talks to me. He talks to me right through here. Right through the Word of God. So I got more ammo now. That's why I'm pushing them scriptures all the time for you and me too. 
So be blessed. Amen. Be blessed and watch your miracles just start clicking in your life too. Amen. Have a great one.